this is you. You are an artist, you draw a lot, or you don't, whatever, but you finished your drawing. It turned out the way you wanted it to turn out. The anatomy, be it the pose, be it the overall composition, be it the coloring. It turned out the way you wanted it to. But it's kind of lacking and you don't know what it is. You're wondering how can I spice up this drawing? How can I make it look more interesting? And that is the topic of today's video where I'm going to give you a few tips on how to make your art more interesting. I myself can work on some of these tips as well, but I'm just sharing with you some opinion of mine or some tips which might be of help for you. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is color correction. What is color correction? Well, it's something that you will have basically in almost every painting tool, every digital painting tool at least that I know. I am working with Procreate usually and there you have it as well. So let's go to this piece for instance, which is the last speed paint I had. I can link it above if you're interested in the speed paint. Yeah, what did I do here? You can see of course I used multiple layers. One not so nice thing with Procreate is that you can't color correct all in one go. You can just mark all the layers and then go to color correct. What you can do however is to go to the settings then with add you can go to copy canvas and then you can do an extra layer just create a new layer and then you can go to paste and then it will copy all the content from all the layers and just add it to one layer and with that you can go into color corrections. If you want to color correct, you go to the magic wand here, to the adjustments, and it's basically all the stuff you can find up here. Hue, saturation, brightness, color balance, curves, and gradient map. You can change the general tone, you can change up the saturation, you can change the brightness, so the darkness of the values. This will affect everything basically on the layer, so your whole canvas. What you can also do is color balance, and that is actually my favorite tool to use. So you can individually edit the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And basically, I will just play around with these scales here for each of these and then save my adjustments. And the third thing I like to do is the curves. To be honest, I'm not a curves pro, so that would be something I would have to look up to. But what I generally like to do is play with the gamma curve. As far as I understood, these are the dark values and these are the light values, so shadows and highlights. And by making a point in the curve higher, these values go brighter and by making a point lower, these values go darker. And so if I were to make a slight S curve to add a point here and to make it a bit lighter here and to make it a bit darker here, that is just, that is something of the sort that a lot of people People do and which will generally just increase the contrast as you could see now the highlights are a bit lighter and the shadows are a bit darker but yeah I'm not a pro in this you can just play around with it something I also saw some people do is to just take one point very close to the darkest one and make the curve a bit less steep so make it a bit lower here the same here to take a point right next to the lightest point and place it a bit higher so that the curve is not that steep but yeah as I said I'm not not a pro in this but I just generally recommend to play around with it and of course that is some stuff that I already did in this piece and you can see it here on my layer 11 where I have the whole canvas pasted in and I adjusted the colors already so let's see a before and after before after before after before after I just like the version better after I did all of that stuff but yeah it's it depends on your personal preference but in my opinion you can fix a lot of things in that step and just make the whole piece a bit more cohesive if you do that. So color corrections is the first thing I recommend. The next thing I want to talk about is the so-called terminator. What is the terminator? A terminator is basically the high saturation that you see here and it happens around skin a lot as far as I understood because of the scattering of the light and because we have blood vessels beneath so what you will see also in photos is a very saturated a very reddish tone between shadow and light and yeah it's something I really like to do I think it adds a lot of interest in your pieces and you will literally always see me do it basically it's also part of what I like to do in my art so let me demonstrate here this is with the terminator this is without the terminator so yeah in my opinion that is instantly much more interesting but it's also according to your own preference of course you can also play around with the opacity of the terminator so you can say you want it to not be that strong or even stronger that is something that really depends on your style also in my opinion 
but yeah play around with it see how you like it here are some more pieces where you can see how i added a terminator and how i think that makes an impact with the terminator this is without the terminator with the terminator without the terminator and to be honest i also added a lot in places where there's no skin so like in clothes or whatever because i think it makes it more interesting even if it's not skin but that's up to you i usually add it with an overlay layer and then just some very bright orange or red the next thing i want to talk about is the background I have to admit, I am one of the worst people when it comes to backgrounds. I avoid them as much as I can, but every time I do decide to add a background, it always makes a piece more interesting. Here, this piece, for instance, it is sort of a background because of the hair wings that are filling the composition of the piece. Here, it also adds more to the piece because of that sun or circle in the background, at least, and these hands. You don't even have to do too much. You don't have to do a whole perspective, background and detailed houses and landscape or whatever. But I try to at least add something or a little bit to make it more interesting. And that is what I can totally recommend, be it like the hands and the sun here, or be it these little symbols on top or just some hands <laughs> around the figure. This little crown which also fills it somehow. The background in itself is not just plain, it has multiple colors and has some sort of color distortion even and texture of some sort. If worse comes to worse, you can at least <laughs> do some sort of gradient so that you have at least multiple colors in the background as compared to just one color. I have to admit though, a lot of times I do just one color. I mean in this case, at least I added normal noise to the background so it's really the little things that spice it up at least a little bit so if you're a bit lazy with backgrounds just like me here another example of just a plain background then maybe try to add at least a little bit here it is this sort of wave for instance that makes it a bit more interesting or you can just do a white outline of some sort that basically contrasts your main focus figure from the background here i have a sort of background and you can instantly notice how different the piece feels because it interacts with its environment and in my opinion it just makes it more interesting here again i just added a simple border i had her go on top of the border in some parts really just to add some visual interest i know i know i'm still not the best at backgrounds i'm avoiding it pretty much but if you're just like me then maybe those are some simple ideas that you can do in that case here's a piece where i actually added a background and yeah it totally makes a difference she's interacting with the background and you can totally see it you can also just make some dots or shapes or whatever and then add a lot of blur to it and then it can look like city lights or something so yeah that is also a lazy way to go about it again just some <laughs> simple clouds a white border a white frame again here some clouds a lot of times i will just add some simple shapes i don't like to go with complicated backgrounds in this case i actually did try myself on some sort of background which had some sort of perspective but i didn't really want to try to keep the line straight and all so you can see that it's kind of bent but yeah i felt that it fit the piece to have like an imperfect background and i like what came out of it and yeah just imagine if she didn't have a background that would be much more boring like that or something so the background adds a lot to the piece but yeah a lot of times you can just get away with simple stuff just like here it's some sort of galaxy it's basically just a gradient some texture it's not just a smooth gradient that it has some texture in it and then some dots that kind of represent stars or something so really you can get away with a lot here again some shapes or some mandala to talk about texture this is again something that i actually need to work more myself it can be for instance noise which i have here for instance or i also have it here stuff like that here i use a different pen to color so it's some pencil like texture which makes it more interesting same here again basically with the noise as you see noise can really be your best friend you can also sort of do scribbles here and there i like to do that in the highlights a lot so something like those scribbles here again just some scribbles to add some texture here again you will find some scribbles and here you will find some really smooth areas where i airbrushed and everything 
but then for instance here the eyeliner was colored in with a pencil-like structure which gives it much more interesting texture. Here is also some sort of brush that wasn't really blended out well and that's not too smooth so you can really see some harsh edges and some pencil dots here and there which just breaks the image a bit. But yeah, it's still something that I personally need to work on more to add more texture to my pieces actually. Using some brushes that are not 100% opaque is also a bit of a secret here to add some texture. So like if I zoom out, it doesn't really look that way but if you look up closely, it's not always perfect and that is also intentional just to break up the perfectness and add some texture to it. Does your character stand like this? Do you have something like this or a simple side profile? If that's you, then you might want to change up your poses a little bit because an interesting dynamic pose does change a lot. What do I mean by that? I'm not saying that your person can't just stand on both feet normally in front of the camera. You very well can do that, but even if you do that, I might suggest you use the contraposto at least or something like that to spice it up and make it more dynamic. What is the contraposto? If you don't know what that is, then definitely make sure to check out my other video, which is how to draw dynamic poses. I will link it above. Even if it's not regarding the contraposto, there's a lot you can do just by dynamic poses themselves. For instance here she's not standing still, she's floating mid-air. It's something else. Try to have an S-curve, make it dynamic. Again, check out the video about dynamic poses to learn more about that. Maybe also just think about interesting poses in general if it's about human figures that you're drawing. You can also check out some Pinterest or some references online. You can always be your own reference actually. You can take photos of yourself or you just pose around. You don't have to show them to anyone. Those pictures are just for you and yeah, those can help you a lot. For for instance here she's having her arms up while her hair is floating so that makes it visually interesting because she's not just standing there of course you can always have interesting motives and symbolism like I have here with the candles in that case even a stiff pose can get more interesting etc but even without doing that just a pose alone can change up a lot here are some more examples where she stands here dynamically spreading out her arms an example where I didn't do it well is this for instance. It's just a simple side profile or just, just a simple portrait. This is a bit more interesting. She's standing more dynamically. She's doing something with her arms. She's falling, which makes it of course more interesting. She's touching her face. So something is happening. It's not just looking at you straight up front. She's not even looking at you. She's looking upwards. That is also something you can do. Sometimes you can even exaggerate poses a lot. This is not realistic at all how she's standing, but it's interesting. You can stylize. Whenever I don't know what to spice up more, you can always play with hair and just have it floating around somewhere. Now you might be thinking, okay Laura, I've done all that, but I don't know, can't I make it more interesting? Well, whenever I look at my paintings and I've already done quite some stuff and I'm just like, mm, I don't know, it's still a bit boring. What you can always do is just add something glowing. I know it's silly, but it's what I like to do here. There's something glowing in the piece. Bam, makes it more interesting because not only do you have something to look at, you also have an interesting light source which then interacts with the whole piece if you do it right. Or like here. Of course there's a lot of symbolism also, but again it's something glowing which also automatically adds some interesting light and that is something I can recommend if you really don't know what to do with the piece anymore to make it more interesting. And if there's not something specific, you can add glows in itself. Here it is the background for instance with these neon lights and then of course you have reflective light because of that. What you can always do is add some color dodge. I did it here in this piece for instance. It's basically just using a color dodge layer and adding some light color on top. Here if I were to remove it, this is without the color dodge, this is with. It's really subtle but it does a lot to the piece. If I were to increase the opacity, it's actually like that. That's what I painted on top basically, but I then lowered the opacity a lot to I think 18%. In my case, you can do it however you like it. Really, it's a subtle change, but it does a lot in my opinion. And I promise there's basically always something you can make glow, be it the eyes or whatever that is. So yeah, play around, maybe you can find something that you can make glow and here we go. If you feel like your colors are too boring, you can always rely on simple color schemes or simple color theory, beat complementary colors, split complementary colors, analogous, triadic, tetradic, whatever. I think the simplest one to go with is complementary colors because by using complementary colors you can add a lot of interest in the piece with only 
two colors or the colors around that and by doing that you can still keep it pretty simple while not getting too overloaded with colors so complementary colors are basically colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel here for instance in this piece you can see me being here somewhere on the turquoise spectrum and then going here on the opposite side in the reddish spectrum so that is sort of complementary colors and adding complementary colors adds a very drastic effect in my opinion, it just makes it very interesting to look at. Here it is the blue and the orange, for instance. This is just a draft, so this is nothing finished, but you can see it has a stark contrasting effect already. In my point before, I spoke about simply adding interesting glow effects, and closely related to that is the next point, which is having interesting lighting. I think a lot of you will simply have a picture or maybe a face where the light is coming from the upper left or something, and I think you can spice it up even just by changing the angle where the light is coming from. Here I have a simple light from the upper left, which is probably the most common one you will see online. I already make it kind of interesting by having some harsh shadows, so the shadow and the lighting itself is already very distinct, so that is already a good thing to have, but you can spice it up even more by simply having light coming from different angles and directions, be it for instance like here coming from below, that is always very interesting to spice it up. We're having light coming from behind more or less and only having reflective light. So maybe look up some preferences of interesting lighting and play with those. If you feel stuck, you can also always play with lighting colors. Of course, the most common one you will find is a yellowish, orangish, yeah, sort of lighting color. But you can always also go with different colors, be it for instance here, which are related to her background. So here it is some blue and some pink. Here I have some reflective light, which also then contrasts her from the background. Here I have some cool light, which is also something different, because as I mentioned, most pieces have warm light, and here there's some cool light. It's these small things that you can play with to make it more interesting. Also, the light doesn't have to be only an airbrush. You can play with the brushes here again, back to the top topic of texture just to make it more interesting and what I personally like to do is just have lines in the end when I do light, when I do the details, when I do the highlights. Here again an example of different light sources. Here you have the orange light, here you have the turquoise light. Also if you're interested in how I made this piece you can check out the speed paint, you will find it above. The next thing I want to talk about is to add some special effects. That can be, for instance, blur. You can see that I blurred some stuff here, and this is a great way to decide where the focus of the piece should be. So here the focus should, of course, be somewhere here, and maybe not so much on the things outside. So here I blurred some of the hair. What you can also play around with is chromatic aberration, which you can also see me do here. So you can see that the colors are going a bit wild here. Also here, because I added some chromatic aberration effect. It's something you can find here, actually, at chromatic aberration and also you can find different blur functions here if you work with procreate if you want to learn more about these sort of functions you can check out my video with all about procreate which you can find linked up here i also did it here again where i blurred out the hair and i also added some chromatic aberration with the colors chromatic aberration is simply splitting colors into multiple colors so what was now turquoise also split up into blue and something reddish here and yeah that is something you can play around with simply to decide where the focus should be it also really gives your piece more depth in my opinion. If we look at that piece for instance and I was wondering how can I make this more interesting, I could have made these parts blurry for instance simply as they're out of focus and not in that frame. One last tip for today, if you still don't think your piece is interesting enough or you're not happy with all the points I mentioned, maybe the last one is something for you. It's something I don't use a lot actually, but you can always add text to your painting. You can really incorporate it and plan it. For instance, here I have some text. It's one of the rare pieces where I have text and you can really plan it out in the composition of the piece. You can make a piece even more meaningful by having that. I would say don't don't overload your pieces with text, but if you feel like something is still missing, a, a piece of text might be the thing for you. With that, that's it for today. I hope these 10 tips could help you and let me know if you have a favorite tip down in the comments and if you already use some of these tips or maybe you have some tips of your own. Uh, yeah, I hope you can spice up your drawings with this. Maybe you might want to check out some of my other videos like the dynamic poses one or the procreate tips one. Some tips were to add for after you're done with your piece just to add that something. Some of these tips are more something you would have to keep in mind right from the beginning. I would appreciate it a lot if you could leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me and with that, hear you soon. Bye!